In this final video in flowchart on lecture one, we'll conclude our study of viruses by looking at the evolution of viruses briefly. Now, when looking at the evolution of viruses, there are two main stories, two main hypotheses to look at. And those will be included in the idea that the cellular origin may possibly present us a hypothesis of viruses themselves. There's going to be a cellular origin hypothesis saying that cells came first and from cells came viruses and then there's also going to be what we call a coevolution hypothesis. The coevolution hypothesis briefly uh, is stating that the fact that cells and viruses may have evolved together and not one after the other. Now, more specifically, when we look at the cellular origin hypothesis, we can state uh, that viruses are derived from bits of nucleic acids. Viruses are derived, meaning they come from bits of nucleic acids. And again, why would we use the nucleic acids? Why are those important? Well, every virus has these nucleic acids, so it would make sense that they're derived from these bits of nucleic acids that somehow, uh, in quotes we can write, escaped. Essentially, these nucleic acids slipped out of their cellular homes um, from the cellular organisms that they were housed in. So these nucleic acids are free. For some reason, they didn't degrade, but they actually stayed uh, pretty much intact. And from there, we get viruses that eventually evolve. A classic example of this that you can actually uh, pretty much understand because of, what, uh, of the lysogenic cycle is the idea of plasmids. Again, plasmids are circular DNA found in prokaryotes. And remember, we looked at a circular virus today, a circular virus within these videos. And that circular, first of all, this circular DNA is in prokaryotes, aka bacteria. And so we also saw, let's say, the phage lambda. Think of phage lambda. I'll put that in uh, parentheses here. Phage lambda had circular DNA, and it really helped its infectivity, its ability to infect, to be lysogenic, because of this matching up between circular and circular DNA of both. So it makes sense that they may be derived from uh, the early cells of life. Now, this cellular origin hypothesis is a good explanation, and it does pretty well explain why viruses are so specific. Viruses are so specific because they come directly from the cells that they possibly are going to uh, infect. And that would make sense because we have this very intimate relationship between cell and host, a host cell and virus. Finally, the cellular origin hypothesis is actually going to also be a very well supported by genetic similarity. So this idea of genetic similarity between, of course, the two people in question. The two things in question are always in the study of viruses, um, of viruses and host cells. We'll say most viruses and host cells share pretty much a, a lot of their genetic information and genetic material. And so it would make sense that they probably originated from the cells in which they share this genetic similarities. Finally, in the coevolution hypothesis, all we need to understand about this hypothesis is the fact that viruses definitely, uh, in this at least situation, must have appeared early, much more early than the cellular origin hypothesis at least, appeared early and this is the evolution of viruses, or you can even call this the origin of viruses, um, in the history of life. And we could even say, in this hypothesis, um, even so early uh, on as they came before the three domains themselves diverged. So they came very early on, so much early on that they came uh, at the time before we had the divergence of bacteria versus archaea versus uh, eukarya. So that's our coevolution hypothesis. The viruses evolved 
with the domains uh, diverging themselves or before that actually happened. This gives us a good broad overview of how viruses may have come about, um, either through a cellular origin hypothesis or a coevolution hypothesis. And this concludes our understanding of both classification, which, much, which was a lot of a review, but still important to understand in our eventual studies of biology 116 that will involve a lot of classification later on. And now we have gone over the first sort of non-living component, yet still important component in understanding uh, the broad diversity that we see of uh, biological life on Earth, which are viruses.